Ah yes, the 60s bathtub. At times, remodelers would be all too eager to just rip everything out and start anew, never once considering that there are aspects worth saving. Well, except whatever the fuck this thing is. This is a cast iron bathtub covered in enamel, which when new, the price can easily go north of $2,000. So today's mission is seemingly simple. We will attempt to preserve much of this tub, seeking to retain its mid-century character, while modernizing things like fixtures, color, and anything else that just seems dated. And oh yes, redo this cock, which looks like it was applied with a toilet brush sticking out of my ass. <laughs> Preservation should always be a consideration when taking on a remodeling project, and there's good reason for that. To begin with, you have to visualize your context. If I were to blow everything in this bathroom up and install junk from the local hardware store, I'll not only get a generic result, but I'll also have ruined the character of the bathroom. And this being a mid-century home, you kind of expect a mid-century bathroom. So removing this sliding glass door and revealing something delicious underneath to me makes sense. Glass doors like these are not just out of date, they're as gross in 2020 as they were in 1960. Here I'm really appreciating the screw holes being in the grout, rather than the tiles. With the glass door removed, I was happy to discover that the decorative tiles were tiled throughout the bathtub area, and that there wasn't a weird offset in the tiles just for no reason. You should also carefully pick your battles. DIY is determined by skill, and you should be confident that by removing something, you will replace it with an equal amount of skill. I chose not to get rid of the tile because I thought it had character, but I also thought there was no way I could outshine the craftsmanship of the professionals who installed this. And speaking of skill, it's probably better to use a heat gun rather than a torch to get the glue to soften up so you can scrape it off with a razor. And another neat trick to removing caulk is soaking it with WD-40. It then comes off like butter. As I mentioned before, this is an enameled cast iron bathtub, and I'm absolutely keeping it, not just because of the quality, but because the design is quite nice. Instead, I'm here cleaning it in preparation of repainting it white. So I no longer have to feel like I'm showering inside someone's pink butthole. But before I get to do that, I decide I wanted a new faucet, handles, and to get rid of that bizarre plastic 80 shower contraption so I shut off the water to the house. And it is here that I discovered my grievous error. It's not going to be so easy as just swapping out the handles. The whole mix valve is going to have to go. Which is just as well because that mix valve doesn't work that well anymore. This is one of those things in DIY where a seemingly simple project starts rapidly rising in difficulty because of something you didn't know. Like, who the hell knew that you can't just swap handles? That was news to me, and because of that I got to now cut out the drywall and realize the hell I'm in for never having a soldered a mix valve before. I also learned that a household basically degenerates into third world country conditions without water within hours. No more showers, no more pooping, no more drinking water. And that is why I ventured to the basement to slap on shutoff valves just for the shower. Attaching a wet shop vac to a faucet is a pro gamer move in case water keeps coming out of your pipes as you're trying to solder. With this detour over in the two valves installed, my anxiety over not being able to go number one dissolves. So back to mid-century aesthetics. The strange 80s shower caddy and massage jet combo contributes fuck all to the overlook of the shower. And by removing it, more mid-century character immediately comes out, courtesy of the pink tiles. The shower head pipe was encased in concrete, which made removal super duper fun. Next comes removing the mix valve. I'd have preferred using a pipe cutter, but there's just no space in there. The angle grinder leaves the ugliest burrs, so that unfortunately creates a lot of extra work. Maybe I can sell this on eBay to someone interested in restoring it along with the handles. <laughs> Here I remove any remaining fittings that I didn't want to cut in order to preserve pipe length. And test fit the new mix valve and discover that those wood blocks are going to block my way, so they have to go as well. And by the way, see those char marks on the wood? I definitely should have used fireproof plumber's cloth to protect it from the torch. Though to my credit, I did keep a fire extinguisher around. I cut the remainder of the faucet pipe and remove it, creating a wonderful new glory hole. Here, I'm applying Teflon tape to these half-inch adapters, which ultimately go into the mix valve. And I give them a real good tighten. Next, there will be a lot of soldering, so you have to cut the pipe, deburr it, sand it, apply flux to both the mating surface and the pipe itself, and then you heat it up and apply solder. The flux will wick the solder into the joint. 
Once it cools down, you have to wipe off the flux with a towel, otherwise it'll keep corroding the pipe. Then I mock up the mix valve so I can get an idea of how everything's going to go together before I actually solder it. In order to move the supply lines and make enough space for the mix valve, I actually cut them at the basement. A completely unnecessary step had I known about the advantage of using no-stop couplings. With a no-stop coupling, you can just slip it on the pipe and have really tight tolerances and have no need to struggle to put two pipes ends together. With the mix valve pretty much installed, I go to the front and I mock up the rest of the hardware that came with the kit. I did this to make sure that the handles fit comfortably on top of the valves. In doing so, I found out that it wasn't far out enough, so I just applied some pipe clamps in the back to bring the mix valve further out front. Here I apply Teflon tape to the shower head pipe and thread it into the existing plumbing. In order to seal up the holes, I applied plumber's putty. Next it was time to sand the bathtub in preparation for the paint. In hindsight, it was not very cash money of me to clean the tub before sanding it, because now I had to clean it all over again. Regardless, enamel is rock hard, and I got it sanded with a lot of difficulty through the combined use of a 400 grit sanding wheel, as well as by hand. Now a word of caution. This stuff stinks to high heaven, and I mean it stinks. It's worse than the devil's farts after eating $50 worth of taco hell. I wore a canister style gas mask and I could still smell it. Not to mention that the stuff is so incredibly noxious, my eyes were watering the whole time. Therefore you gotta open the windows, turn the fan on, wear a gas mask, and thoroughly block off the door, unless you want to gas the rest of the house. Either way, I applied the stuff using a combination of a microfiber roller and a paintbrush, but both of those kept leaving behind brushes and fibers, so perhaps a foam roller would have been a better choice. You want to apply at least two coats spaced one hour apart. After, it takes a full three days to cure, so get that gym membership ready so you can shower there in the meantime. It's also a good idea to tape off the drain and either stuff a towel or put a rubber glove over the faucet, so that no water drips on this while it cures. When cured, use a razor to cut the paint around the tape so you don't accidentally rip any paint off when removing the tape. This time I wasn't intending to apply the caulk with a toilet brush, so I invested a few bucks into a caulk applicator which is worth every penny. I know they say, oh yeah, just use your fingers, but if you're like me, most of your fingers are thumbs and have all the finesse of a dump truck filling a glass of water. Look at that result. Yeah, with the exception of a few drip marks, the bathtub looked really great and has so far withstood being showered in regularly. The bizarre 80s contraption was replaced with a stylish shower caddy. Finally, the sliding glass door was replaced with a curved shower curtain bar. These have the advantage of creating more space inside the shower and have a generally very modern appearance. Overall, I'm incredibly happy with how everything turned out. I think our goal of preserving the mid-century appearance was achieved and function was improved. Giving the tub a white paint job instantly made it more appealing and modern, yet retro. I will link all the tools and supplies I use in the video in the description below. In the next video, we will figure out what can be done about this loudly pink floor. Thank you for watching.